Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care uh, series. Uh, as you may know, uh, I like to alternate between uh, education topics and use cases and bias, ethics, safety uh, kind of topics. So I thought I'd do an education uh, topic today. Uh, and the topic is agentic AI. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is I think this is going to be one of the big buzzwords for AI this year, uh, this year being 2025. And um, and I feel it's my responsibility to kind of do some education on this so you know what the word means, basically, and can kind of think through what it might mean to your uh, organizations. Uh, also on this channel, Nikolai has given a nice little overview of Agentic AI, so take a look at that video. And today what I wanted to do is just use one example, the simplest example I can think of, and kind of walk you through um, uh, what, uh, what Agentic AI is is all about okay all right so let us uh let us begin so um first of all i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna start out with the um using the word compound uh ai or compound llms uh and then i'll change it to agentic uh, later on in the in the talk but um if you think about an llm actually does you give it a prompt you know, which is usually, you know, multiple paragraphs of kind of input text, instructions, context, things like that. And believe it or not, it predicts the next word. So you might give it a bunch of instructions. Actually, uh, the example I wanted to use for this video is plan, a, pl uh, build me a marketing plan for a new product launch, something like that. And you want the LLM to help you kind of uh, get a draft plan so you could start uh, going. So you Put in that whole instruction, you put in background of your new product, that kind of thing, uh, examples from your other product launches, something like that. So you pack the prompt in there, you send it to the LLM, and the LLM will pick the next word. And the word might be the, the beginning of the next sentence. And then actually feeds that word back into the LLM and asks it to predict the, the next word. Uh, and the next word might be plan or something like that. And it actually does this um, one at a time. And so that's why when you use like ChatGPT or whatever, you'll see the words come off uh, incrementally is because that's the way the model is working. It's basically doing one word uh, at a time. Uh, so it's kind of amazing that it works, but that's the fundamental architecture of these uh, models. But there's one important thing about this, if you think about it, is there is no back button. So these models do their work without any sort of editing, reflection, or refinement, unlike the way we write. So if you think of you building a plan or you building a presentation, you might think of an outline, then you might do a first draft, then you might work on a script, you might work on some slides, you might review it with others, you might have a second draft, you might review it with a larger group or do a dry run, and then you might have a final draft, and then you might want to give the, the presentation. So there's usually multiple revisions. But in LLM, we really don't give it that opportunity. We just have it do it in one shot, uh, basically. And so one of the things that we're finding is if you string together LLMs in more of a compound style, that they can actually do a better job. So let me give an example of... Of, of an approach to a writing task like building the plan. Hey there, I'm just popping in to say that I'd love to hear your comments and feedback on this video. I read all the comments, so let me know what you think. Let me know what suggestions you have for my next video by uh, putting in some comments uh, below the line here. Thanks. So an approach might be using a, a group of three LLMs. So you might, and I'm calling a compound, LLM. So you might want to do the first LLM call to say, um, write me a draft of a marketing plan for this product launch. And you pack, you know, you pack it with the prompt, like I said. Uh, and that gives a response. And then you might take a different LLM or the same LLM with a different prompt. And you say, can you critique this marketing plan? So this might be the critique LLM. Um, and, and just ask it, hey, here's the plan, here's the background material, can you critique it, make sure it looks good to you and everything is there and that sort of thing. And its response would be a critique of the plan itself. And then you 
take that critique, you take the original draft, and you send it to a third LLM, and you say, given this critique, can you update this draft marketing plan based on the feedback from the critique and give me another version? So this actually works. This will give you a much better result. And you can try it yourself, actually, with chat. Uh, GPT. You can use the same LLM. You can use different LLMs. That might give you a different variety, different perspective. But this compound LLM approach actually gives you a higher quality response. And you can see why, if you think of AI as a little bit like the way we think, uh, it's helpful to reflect. It's helpful to have a chance to do another version, those kinds of things, versus just a um, again, doing it without without a a back button uh, type of thing. So this is this is a compound LLM style, um, and you might recall or you might have heard about a, a prompt engineering study that happened a year or two ago. Google did, um, and if they if you put into the prompt, you ask the LLM a question, and you put in the prompt, please take a pause between each step of the answer. Uh, the LLM actually improved its accuracy when it was asked to pause. So this is a fancier version of that, where you're giving LLMs an opportunity to reflect, to critique, to do multiple versions of something. You actually get a better, uh, a better output. Um, so this is a this is a compound uh, LLM, basically um, using these multiple steps. So now let's get back to agentic um, AI. This is an example of agentic AI. And what I want you to do to sort of get a feel for what agentic AI is, is take three mental leaps, okay? The first leap, I'm gonna write over here, is don't use the word LLM, use the word agent. So this AI agent is writing the draft, this agent, is writing a critique, and this agent is writing the final plan. So it's a small little language thing, but essentially think of these LLMs as agents, and each agent is doing one piece of this task. Okay, so that's mental leap number one, is call these, if you wanna sound smart, let's say, or fully buzzword compliant, you can call these things agents instead of LLMs. So that's the first mental leap. The second mental leap is don't assume that each of these steps is an LLM, okay? So some of these agents might be something simple like a Google search. So for instance, when I um, present, I usually like to present some statistics to support my point, okay? So let's say this is a presentation. I could do a write a draft presentation, critique it, and then write a final version. But I could also add in some steps, like um, I could add a data request agent. So given this, sorry, that says request. Uh, given this plan, um, what sort of data would be useful to support the plan or to support this presentation? Uh, and this, L, this agent will just return like a list of statistics that would be nice. Then you might have another agent that does a Google search for those statistics, okay? Takes the string value, I don't know, average age of, of, uh, of people in such and such country or something like that, uh, does searches, gets the answer back. And then it feeds that answer. Uh, maybe you do like a draft, another draft that has the initial draft supported by extra data and writes a new draft. And then you send it to the critique model or the critique agent, and then you send it to the final agent. So this is a, again, an, an agent style workflow, but this agent here, let me use a different color for fun. This agent here is not an LLM, it's just a tool, okay? So some of these agents could be tools like do a Google search, call an API to schedule an appointment, um, the calculator API to do some math. Um, so you can help each of these agents with a, with a set of tools. So some of these agents won't necessarily be an LLM, they'll be a tool, okay? So that's um, leap number two. Leap number one is call these things agents. Leap number two is not every agent is an LLM. Some might be tools. 
many will be LLMs, but some might be uh, tools. And then the third leak, uh, the third leap, I'll just write a th three right here and then I'll just explain it verbally, is that don't necessarily assume that this is a predetermined path. You might have an orchestrator agent that you tell it, hey, um, you write as many drafts of this presentation, do as many draft loops as you think would be necessary with a maximum of 10, let's say, to produce a final product. Or um, as you're, after each draft, ask for data needs, search out those data needs with this Google search tool, uh, and then write another final draft and do that until you have no more data needs. Um, so you kind of can use one of these agents as an orchestrator to step through the rest of the process. So uh, I think of it like that. Um, uh, if you recall, Black Mirror had an episode where you and the audience could affect the path of the episode. You could affect what happens in the next uh, scene. It's a little bit like that. Instead of having like a TV show that just comes at you in the order that the, um, that the person who directed it thought that you would, through the process of jumping through the workflow, adjust the different steps. So you would tell the orchestrator overall instructions, what agents that orchestrator has available, what tools are available, what the general flow is, and that orchestrator could orchestrate its way through the, the workflow instead of you specifying, hey, these are the six steps. Um, so that's that's all I wanted to cover. So it's a concept of, that starts with compounding LLMs together. Um, you know, maybe not a lot of them, but three of them, you know, allows an LLM to do a much better job. The draft critique model, maybe a model that checks against your, your organizational policies or your brand or that kind of thing. So you can have these different pieces and parts. Uh, LLMs do parts of your task. Um, think of those, those LLMs as agents, um, and they all don't have to be LLMs. So think of them as agents. Think of the agents as sometimes being an LLM, but sometimes being other tools. Uh, and then lastly, imagine uh, building workflows where one of the agents could, or many of the agents could be sort of directing what happens next instead of you kind of pre-thinking this whole flow in code or or in your application okay so um more to come on this uh, i would imagine throughout the year as uh, as we find different use cases but i just wanted to introduce the topic to you at the beginning of the year you know give you the simple example to think through um so you weren't kind of either lost or intimidated or uh, you could participate in helping your organizations and helping yourself think through you know where i AI is going this year and how you might uh, take advantage of some of these new new ways of thinking. Okay, so that's it. Hope that was interesting. And until next time, bye. Hey there, I hope you liked this video. Um, I've added a next video at the end of this. So um, so take a look at that if you, uh, if you enjoyed this. And if something resonated with you, please drop uh, a comment um, at um, uh, down below here. I read every comment. Uh, myself, and I really appreciate hearing from you. Thanks.